Typically, I like to do these tutorials in real time so you can actually see me install the software packages and configure them as I do for the actual system. But unfortunately, the video files got corrupted this time, so I'm going to have to do it retrospectively. So what I am doing here is setting up a Samba server. And Samba works on a local network the way iCloud works over the internet. You can, in fact, put Samba over the internet, but that creates some security concerns that I'm not going to go into here. So for our purposes, this is just going to be on a local network. And what you will end up with is something like this. So if you are looking at my left bar here, you can see I have a drive mounted on this computer. And actually, this drive exists on my server. And I can put as many files as I like here. I can create new folders and add new files, and it will exist on a different computer entirely. So it allows me to have an iCloud-like storage of hundreds of gigabytes, even terabytes, if I have the space without having to use any of these paid services. I can just host this myself. And what you need to do in order to set this up is to install Samba, which you can do with sudo apt get install Samba. Now, depending on your package manager, this, this syntax might be slightly different. So if you're using Ubuntu, this, and I think you actually can remove the git here and just do sudo apt install Samba. But whatever it is, you just want to install Samba. Once installed, all we have to do is edit the configuration file, which for my case exists under sudo nano etsy slash samba slash smb.conf or configuration. And again, depending on your distribution, it may be in a slightly different place, but this is the file we are basically looking for. And you're just going to scroll down here until we find homes. Now, this is going to be the most basic configuration possible, and this is going to be access to users' home directories. So for me, slash home slash Eric is my user's home directory on this server. And simply by uncommenting this section here, all up until this net login, or actually valid users, uh, uncommenting all of that just makes it so that I can access that user's home directory from anywhere else on my network so long as I can log in. And there are a few parameters here, so browsable, and that makes it so that I can actually go into the directory and search through these different folders and find things nested within. Uh, read only, I believe this is initially set to yes, and I changed it to no. And this makes it so that when I mount this on my Mac, for example, I can actually edit the files that exist on it. Create mask. This is setting permissions. And if you're not familiar with Linux permissions, then you might want to do some research on that. To give you a basic understanding, this is specifying permissions for in this exact um, position in the number. It is specifying for the user, and then it specifies for the group, and then it specifies for other. Seven means you have full permission, so I can read, write, and execute files in that location. Group has zero, so they cannot read, write, or execute anything at all in my directory, and other cannot do anything either. So the way this is set up, 0700 makes it so that only the home directory's owner can do anything in it. And directory mask does the same thing, basically. Now it is set up like this uh, for security reasons, you can change these. Uh, if, if you are the only one using it or if you are just having people access their, their home directories all over the network, then I would recommend leaving it alone. And with that, we can just write out our changes, close it, and then restart the system. So sudo systemctl restart samba, and it might also be smbd. Now, I'm not going to actually run that because I don't need to restart, but that's what you would need to do after editing the configuration file. Now, the last thing you're going to need to do is actually create a user for the Samba account. Now, I already have a user, Eric, and this user has a home directory slash home. If we just list everything in there, we can see that I have my home directory, but I need to create basically a duplicate user for Samba. So I need to create a Samba user and password for this account. So I'll do sudo 
smb passwd dash a and then i'll type in eric and then it will prompt me to type in a password and retype the password again i already have done this so i'm not going to actually run that command now once i do however i will then be able to mount my samba drive onto any computer i want so if we come over here and unmount this i can now mount it again by up here going to go, connect to server, and then just typing in the address. Now I have set up host names on this machine, so I can type in that, but if you have not, you'll wanna type in the IP address of that machine on your local server. So whichever one is running the Samba server, just type in that IP address there, and then the slash, and then the username that you want to connect to. Also notice this SMB on the front. Now this is exactly like a HTTP or HTTPS URL, but HTTP and HTTPS are specifying two of many protocols that you can use over networks. SMB is another one, and since we're trying to connect to a Samba server, that is the one we're going to want to use. So I can just hit connect, and there we go. It is now mounted on my system, and I can open up all the files and do all of the exploring I want. Now there are some more complex setups that you can do with Samba. For example, if I go back to the configuration file, and we look down here at homes, right here, I can copy this syntax largely and create my own Samba share. So for example, I could do, let's say I have, uh, let's call it the data, or actually let's, let's call it backups. And one use case for this would be on all of the other servers that I'm running and even my personal devices, I could have them mount a Samba share. And then once a week, I could have them create a backup of their whole system and just paste it into the Samba share. That would automatically store it on a separate device. So we could, let's say we're going to do that. What I would want to do is, we'll say, if you got one too many spaces, there's actually four spaces. Comment, we'll call it backups. And then we will say that it is browsable. It is not read only because in this case, I want each individual machine to be able to add things to it, not just access things. And then we'll say, okay, so let's say that if I am the owner of the file, of the folder, then I want to be able to do everything. But let's say I want to have each machine log in. That's just a group. That's part of a group that's going to be able to do this. So I'm gonna give that the group permission seven as well. That way they can read and write and execute files in that directory as well. And then other people, I don't want them to be able to do anything, so I'll add another zero. So again, we are specifying the seven here is for me as the owner of the folder itself. The second seven is the permissions for anyone that is part of the group that owns the folders. And the last one is for other people who uh, would access the folder, and in this case, they wouldn't. So that's what the zero is for. Directory mask, we can copy over. And then the only thing that will be different here, you can see down here at the bottom. We want to specify the path for this share. And let's just say it's in slash backups. And then I can close this. You'll want to save it. I am not going to because I don't need that. And then you'll restart Samba. And then you will be able to access your share. And when you're going into this part to mount it, what you'll do differently is you'll say connect to server and you'll just change this to backup, whatever you named it. You would have put it in the square brackets. And that's how you can create a different Samba server. And you can actually have multiple different shares for multiple different purposes on your different machines. All right, so we all know how this part works. If this video is useful to you, please hit the like button. It helps me grow the channel and it'll help other people find the video. 
Also, this is part of a larger project where I'm trying to build a company starting with just three old laptops. So if you're interested in seeing how I do that, you can hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get notifications when I upload a new video. So thank you for watching.